The Rune software is the heart of the Rune music system. It can run on a Windows, Mac OS or Linux computer and on some high-end NASes. But now there is Rune Rock, a dedicated Rune core server for the Intel NUC computer. That's what I've been waiting for. Although setting up a Rune Rock computer can be done by anyone that's not afraid of a keyboard, it turned out to be a three part video. In this part one I will introduce the Rock concept and alternatives and start setting up the computer. Rock is short for Rune Optimized Core Kit and can be downloaded for free as a disk image that will do the complete installation. Although the Rock software is based on a Linux kernel, it is highly optimized for its purpose. After installation, keyboard, mouse and monitor are no longer needed. Some very basic settings can be done from another computer or tablet using a web based interface, while all typical Rune settings are done as always using the remote control app of Rune that might run on a tablet, smartphone and or computers. Updates are done the same way as with Windows, Mac OS and Linux versions. The user interface asks you whether the update can be installed immediately or at another moment. When you allow it to update, it runs all by itself, but here not only the room core is updated, but also the Linux kernel if needed. So the Intel NUC computer effectively becomes a headless server or, if you like, a kind of consumer device. For those that don't like fiddling with computers, Rune will introduce the Nucleus, a NUC based Rune server in a classy housing. Being a wordsmith, I love this name. Nucleus not only starts with NUC, it's Latin for core and in computing synonymous for the core of a computer's operating system. Rune Lab's Nucleus has no forced cooling while optionally a linear power supply is available for those that like to connect that USB DAC directly to the Nucleus. There will be two versions. The Nucleus is based on an Intel Core i3 and the Nucleus Plus based on a Core i7. Prices will be $1200 and $2000 including the software but excluding the subscription. Considerable more money than a NUC on which you install the ROC software yourself, but it's fiddle free and supported by the dealer. Since we are it, ELAC will also introduce a NUC based machine, but this is more in line with their Discovery DS S101G and thus have audio outputs. In contrast to the DS S101G, it will run the full version of Rune and thus have an unlimited catalog size and all other features of the full version of Rune. The Nucleus and Discovery devices come ready to use. This is not the case for the Intel NUC of course. If you go Dutch, meaning you save money by installing ROC on an Intel NUC computer, you first have to decide what version of the NUC to use. The NUC model number starts with NUC followed by a series number, a processor type and some alphabet soup. So a NUC 5i3 followed by three characters is a fifth generation using a core i3 processor and a NUC 7i5 is the seventh generation with a core i5 processor. ROC runs on NUC 5 to NUC 7 series. According to Rune Labs, the i3 models are suited for small and medium libraries while the core i7 processor might be needed for large libraries. Small, medium and large are not quantified however. I think that using DSP functions will have an impact on the CPU load too unless Rune uses the GPU, the graphics processor for DSP functions. One last remark, the NUC computers know of two kinds of cabinets. A low one that can only house an M.2 SSD drive and a higher version that can also house a 2.5 inch hard disk or SSD. The model number of the low version ends on a K while the tall version ends on an H of hard disk. 
Back to the installation. There is a comprehensive install guide on the RuneLab site, the link is in the show notes. You start with preparing the Intel NUC computer since it comes without a driver memory, those have to be ordered separately. There are also dealers that install a drive and memory at extra charge. Since the components you are going to install are sensitive to static discharge, you should preferably wear a static band available from the same source you got your Intel NUC and memory from. This band is worn around the wrist and is connected to the ground plane of the computer, which is about any large metal part in the computer. If you don't want to buy a static band, at least first touch the metal part on the computer before handling components and try to avoid contact with the components and the copper traces on the PCBs. You now will install a 64 GB or larger SSD in the M.2 slot. SSD stands for solid state drive, a drive that has no spinning disk inside but non-volatile memory. The M.2 variant comes on a small PCB instead of a hard disk housing as was the standard. You also have to install 4 GB or more of RAM. RuneLabs is quite clear about the capacity of both the SSD and the RAM. You only need a 64 GB SSB, although these are becoming obsolete, so you probably have to buy 128 GB. More is not a problem, but it's a waste of money as long as the 64 GB version is available. Either the 42 mm or 80 mm versions can be installed. To do this you first have to fully disconnect the Intel NUC computer and then open it by putting it top down, preferably on a towel or other smooth surface to prevent scratches. Now unscrew the four screws in the feet on the bottom. Then lift the bottom carefully. If you have chosen the taller version that can hold a 2.5 inch drive, two cables will be attached to the bottom, so you have to fold the bottom to one side. Now find the M.2 connector and for the 18mm version you have to remove two screws A and B. Then align the small notch at the bottom edge of the M.2 card with the key in the connector and insert the M.2 card into the connector. Secure the card using one of the two screws you just removed. The 42mm version can be inserted the same way but this time you need not remove screw A and you use the screw that came from position B to secure the M.2 card. If you have bought the H version that can hold a 2.5 inch hard disk as well, you might choose to use the 2.5 inch slot to install the system drive if you have a 64 GB 2.5 inch SSD laying around. Please do realize that the system drive does have to be an SSD drive, a spinning drive simply is too slow for the Rune core. Since M.2 drives are the fastest, it's best to use these as a system drive. That leaves you with a 2.5 inch drive slot you can use for music. 2.5 inch spinning discs are now available up to a capacity of 5 terabytes, sufficient for about 10,000 CD quality albums in FLAC or Apple lossless. High res files like 24192 or DSD64 take a 6 volt on space, so if you would have only these albums you are limited to about 1700 albums on a 5 terabyte drive. Mind you, this is only the storage space for the audio files. The room database on the system drive is virtually unlimited. Illustrated. The 128GB M.2 SSD in my NUC stores metadata on all my 10200 albums and still has 91% of free disk space. Instead of a spinning disk you could also use a 3.5 inch SSD. These are considerably more expensive and are limited to about 2 terabytes. Speed wise there is no need for an SSD. but some say that these drives produce less electronic noise and therefore offer better sound quality. This might be true since SSDs generally use far less power than spinning disks, as can be seen in this graph. Higher power consumption might cause varying voltages on the power bus. 
This might be of influence when a DAC is connected directly to the computer. If you use a network audio adapter like a Raspberry Pi running Hi-Fi Berry endpoint software, the SOTM SMS200 or the Sonori Micro Renu, if you use a DAC that has a Roon endpoint integrated like the PS Audio DAC, or if you use a Roon compatible streamer like the Blue Sound series, I won't think it will make any difference since a network cable is the only connection between the renderer and the NUC. Anyway, installing a 2.5 inch drive in the H version of the NUC is as simple as just sliding in. This is the end of part 1. I'm already working on part 2 where we will work further on the completion of the NUC and install the software. So stay in contact by subscribing to this channel or my newsletter or follow me on Twitter, Facebook or Google+. See the show notes for the links. If you have a question, post it below this video but please don't ask me for buying advice. See my about questions video to find out why. If you like this video, please consider supporting the channel through Patreon and see super exclusive videos too. Just one dollar a month will do. The link is in the show notes. And don't forget to tell your friends on the web about this channel. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music. <laughs>